Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and this is truly a smoking gun, absolute bombshell news, and I don't use such terms lightly. Empower Oversight has received close to 200 pages of emails uh, having to do with former SEC director Bill Hinman, who of course gave the Ethereum free pass speech, and what's contained within is absolutely shocking and amazing. It's 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 proof that what we've been positing as having occurred, or in some instances, depending on what which aspect you're talking about, likely occurred uh, regarding the Ethereum free pass speech. Like this is not a conspiracy theory. This is undeniable truth that Billy Boy Hinman knew that uh, what he was doing was not approved of. In fact, John Deaton's organization, Crypto Law, uh, pointed out that this is, and this is a quote, uh, it's criminal financial conflict. Criminal financial conflict. So if Billy Boy Hinman hasn't got an attorney yet, it might be worth doing so because according to some within the community, uh, it's pretty clear at this point. But um, so before going further, I want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So I'm going to share with you the specifics of what's going on, get you caught up to speed. And I'm going to share with you some specifics from these emails. I'm going to pull them up on the screen so you can see for yourself what Bill Hemman wrote. Uh, what people within the uh, ethics office said uh, he, he cannot do, yet he did anyway. And I've got comments from attorney John Deaton, all, all sorts of fun stuff here. Uh, here is, is uh, the organization that uncovered this. It's Empower Oversight. This is the organization that in December of last year sued the SEC after filing a FOIA request. That's Freedom of Information Act request. Uh, they demanded all sorts of documents, which should be free to them, having to do with... Uh, uh, well, certainly Bill Hinman and others, and I've highlighted their journey to this point, so I don't want to rehash that all. But that's the organization that has has gotten these these documents. They they actually were handed over. Uh, it was ordered that they had to. They did it quite begrudg begrudgingly, and it's damning. It is actually damning. I have a feeling this is just the tip of the iceberg. Wait till we get the rest of the documents that should be coming uh, to the, the direction of Empower Oversight here. Um, the whole thing from Empower Oversight provided an update is on your screen. I'm going to read just the top part. And then, and then after that, we're going to get right into, after some comments from John Deaton, right into, well, along the way, uh, some specifics from the emails. But it reads as follows. Empower Oversight received just under 200 pages of emails from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission responsive to its FOIA request for records that could shed light on allegations of conflicts of interest associated with the SEC's selective enforcement actions involving cryptocurrencies. This comes on the heels of over a thousand pages of documents that the SEC released to Empower Oversight in February. Among other things, the documents show that the SEC Ethics Office cautioned former SEC official William Hinman that he had a direct financial interest in Simpson Thatcher, that's his law, old law firm, what, which he went back to, by the way, works there now, uh, and thus he must recuse himself from any matters that would affect the firm. Additionally, the ethics office explicitly told Hinman, per the documents, to not be in any contact with Simpson Thatcher for any reason. Let me just pause to note, uh, he was in contact. And not only that, not only that, I still don't get this. I think it just has to do with perhaps his supreme arrogance. He thought he this would never come out. Why would it come out? I'll never get caught for doing this. But he literally was emailing the, the, uh, people that he was told he couldn't email from his official SEC email address. What in the ever-loving hell is that? Don't, don't you have a damn Gmail? If not, like, you can get one for free. Don't cost nothing. If you have the Webernets, you can just do it. My God. So that's what I'm thinking, like, just the pure arrogance of this man. Like, wh what? He's not stupid. Wow. Anyway, this continues. Though. However, Hinman met with Josh Bonney, a partner at Simpson Thatcher, at least three times after that warning. Hinman also met with the co-founders and investors in Ethereum ahead of a market-moving speech he gave in 2018, declaring the digital asset Ether to not be a security, despite Simpson Thatcher's participation in the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, which is dedicated to promoting the commercial use of Ethereum. 
This raises questions as to whether Hinman fully disclosed Simpson Thatcher's role in Ethereum from SEC ethics officials and whether they would have approved the meetings or his speech if he had. So again, folks, this is not conspiracy stuff. This is cold hard fact now. Pure, like purely plain and simple, full stop. That's what it is. We were right. Um, here's what John Deaton had to say. He wrote, to all the people who called me and my 66,000 friends conspiracy theorists, Bill Hinman violated basic rules involving ethics. This is much bigger than the standard revolving door at the SEC. If his June 14th, 2018 speech was his personal opinion, he violated Title V. Hashtag facts. And when he's, so when he's talking about the, the revolving door there, it's this idea of when you were a regulator at the SEC, yeah, you want to, you know, enforce the, the laws, enforce the rules of the road, right? But you don't want to go too hard against everyone necessarily because once your time is up at the SEC, because it is a revolving door, you got to go work in the private sector, right? So you don't want to be too harsh, right? That's the idea here anyway. But when he mentions Title V, uh, and I've highlighted this before, but just in a nutshell, it, it indicates that if you're working at the SEC, you cannot use your position to benefit, to financially benefit specific firms in particular if you have financial interest in them. And clearly, Billy Boy Hinman, he got paid. We, we know also that he got paid $15 million over the years that he was working at the SEC, not from the SEC, of course. Hell no, that doesn't pay that much. But Simpson Thatcher paid him $15 million while he was coming up with policy and guiding crypto markets, which would directly benefit Simpson Thatcher. It's astonishing that this is real, but it is real. Here's another comment from attorney John Deaton. It doesn't pass the smell test, taste test, or sight test. Flagrant violations. I bet he claims now, referencing Hinman, he didn't know his law firm was a member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance when he gave his speech. That's as true as someone claiming I have a thick, illustrious head of hair. <laughs> Good sense of humor there, but no, look, the point is certainly not lost on me here. What do you think? What can you say at this point? Because if you did know, you definitely, right? I mean, I would think anyway. Uh, there's definitely concerns of legal legal issues. If you're talking about Title V, because you're not supposed to do that type of stuff, doesn't it seem like that's probably a problem? And, uh, you know, if, if you didn't know that, how is how is that remotely believable? How is it, How can he even say anything else? I wonder if there's any evidence, though, that might come out. He might be backed into a corner for all we know. Maybe there is proof that he did know if, if certain emails get out. We'll just have to see. I mean, this came out. I mean, this seemed like, a, you know, like a pipe dream that something like this would come out if he went back, you know, four, five, six months ago. But here it is. And we've got it. Thanks to Empower Oversight. Incredible stuff here. Uh, and then here's another one from John Deaton. And he, he shares one of the actual emails. So I'm going to read part of an email, too. But first, here's the comment from John Deaton. Hinman didn't just have retirement benefits. He had an ongoing financial interest in the success of Simpson Thatcher. The better his law firm did, the better he did. Helping clients equals money for Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Ethics told him to not meet with his partners, yet he continued. He was a double agent. And so here's one of the screen grabs he shared from that this uh, release of almost 200 pages of emails here. Uh, and this is, this is amazing. And so he was speaking, this is email threads between uh, some uh, people at the ethics office, the key person here being uh, somebody named Shira Minton. And so he was, Bill, Billy Boy, him, and you can see at the bottom, he was saying, do you need individual partners or just the law firms? Because he was going to send over firms that he has relationships with so that the ethics office could tell him what he can and cannot do uh, with you know, people at those firms, effectively. That's what he's getting at. And so, uh, so Shira Minton responded, she's from the ethics offices, and wrote the firm. So just need the, the law firms, not individual partners, just the firms. But wrote something very powerful. Listen to this. Shira wrote the, the following. But Bill, it occurs to us that you have a full financial conflict with your old firm, not just an impartiality one. Hence, you should not be having any meetings with your old firm, even group meetings. Uh, folks, Shear is making it very clear here. Correct? Look at this. Full financial conflict. And, and we know, it's very clear because we have the, the email documentation, 
he disregarded that. He met with, uh, with what was the guy's name? Josh Bonney, I think is the name. It's there's, More of it's coming up here. Um, now take a look at uh, at this. Uh, because, because look, um, oh, actually, first, I don't want to get starting to get ahead of myself here. Um, there's a very short email from Bill Hinman where he named some law firms and then wrote, let's talk live about my rest restrictions. Thanks. So he understands that there are things that he's just not allowed to do from an ethics perspective, which also could delve into illegal if he crosses certain lines. And then Shira responded with the following. Happy to talk live. My outlook is up to date if you want to schedule something. However, the analysis is the same for Simpson as it's always been. You have a bar under the criminal financial conflict. Did you hear that? Criminal financial conflict with Simpson. Uh, that's his law firm, Simpson Thatcher, because you have an ongoing financial interest in the firm. Meeting with them while having such a conflict is not permitted. As we discussed during your briefing, even calls with them are not permitted, even folks, even phone calls. And then Shear wrote the following. It's also a serious optics issue. You can't be seen to be granting special access to a firm you have a financial interest in. This meeting is small enough to raise concerns. Folks, they're talking about a small, tiny meeting in which perhaps real impropriety might not have even occurred. But Shear is saying you can't even do that though, right? And so, look, as far as I know, that's that one specifically. Uh, well, there are certain meetings that I, I think perhaps he didn't go to, but there are there are things he did. It's provably the case, like the meeting specifically with, like I said, that one partner from uh, from Simpson Thatcher. But look at this. You can't be seen to be granting special access to a firm. Well, that's what the XRP community has been saying for about a year at this point. He did that. He clearly did that. It was dug up by the community. And, and I can't even imagine the number of man hours that, that went into this, like researching all this from, from our community, seriously. And, and, and we, were, we were absolutely correct. So imagine just a small meeting like that's a serious problem. And then he went on to, to just go uh, to the, what was it, the Yahoo Financial Summit, I think is what the event was called when he gave the Ethereum Free Pass speech. And then he was trotted out on national television and he was written about in mainstream media throughout the country. Uh, his Ethereum free pass speech, which was taken as official SEC decree. That's way bigger than a small meeting. And here they're saying, no, you can't do this, citing criminal financial conflict. So you couldn't do the small meeting. So we just decided, oh, you're, a, you're cool, Ethereum. You can just, yeah, whatever. You're fine. You're decentralized enough. There we go. There's, there's no central authority, even though he met with that central authority a number of times in the months leading up to that, that very speech. Completely ridiculous. And then here's Jason Foster, who founded Empower Oversight, and he, he just wrote here key emails. And I wanted to highlight, I think this is the part right here. Take a look at this. Um, here we go. So this is also from Shira, and uh, it, it reads as follows. This is to Bill Hinman. Bill, we have received some initial guidance from the Office of Government Ethics, and they pose some follow-up questions, see below. Of particular note, Office of Government Ethics, OGE for short, advised that if the proposal from the firm would fix the payments only during your term of government service, i.e. you would return to receiving retire benefit, retirement benefits that are in part calculated based on the profits of the firm at the conclusion of your government service, you would continue to have a financial interest in the firm's profitability while you are in government. This means you could not participate in any SEC particular matters that would directly and predictably affect the firm under 18 U.S.C. 208. In other words, the future interest is enough to give you a full financial interest in the firm. Right there. That's, folks, that is exactly what happened, though. It's, it, it's specific SEC matters that, uh, that, that, re, that related back to his firm. Could not be more clear. He knew better than this. He didn't care. He did it anyway. Uh, and then there was this from Attorney John Deaton. He wrote the following. In today's divided times, it's refreshing to see how a decentralized community has come together demanding integrity and transparency from a government agency. Empower Oversight's efforts are 100% independent of mine. Uh, crypto Law uh, US 
or the 66,127 extra P holders who demand a fair playing field. Whew. Amazing stuff, though. I am so thankful for, obviously, John Deaton, but also Empower Oversight. This is absolute smoking gun level material, unquestionably. Now, uh, let's just prove that uh, that Billy Boy Henman did know that uh, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance uh, was directly linked to Simpson Thatcher. Let's let's find direct proof of that, because you know he's going to deny it when he's finally asked. I think John Deaton's right about that. Um, and then there was this uh, from John Deaton. Wait until the emails with consensus, Lubin, Perkins, Cooey, etc. I've said for 18 months, the only logical reason behind this case being filed the way it was, with the absurd allegations of the token itself being a security, was the lawsuit itself being used as a weapon. It's proving True. Yeah, that could not be more more true. Um, and then here's a couple of tweets from Eleanor Turret where she was noting the criminal financial conflict concern right there. And uh, I'm not going to read them both. They're on your screen right now. But uh, she also noted that she has reached out to Billy Boy Hinman, Mr. Hinman, as she writes, as well as the SEC for comment on this. So uh, maybe we're going to get something back. I'm not holding my breath on that one. But uh, if we do, I'll be sure to let you know. That's Eleanor Turret, of course. She's a journalist with Fox Business Network. Um, and I think we're getting close to, uh, yeah, yeah. That, okay. So that's the majority of what I wanted to cover. There's going to be a lot more to say in the future. Um, you know, because people are still digging through these emails. I think those are probably the biggest pieces. They really jump out at you, uh, but there'll be more analysis, more things to say about this, but this is absolutely gigantic news. This is a win for the XRP community. So Billy boy, him and now how you gonna act? I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.